Do you have proof of that? COD, College of DuPage trustee meeting that uh, she put together. I'm Kirk Allen with Edgar County Watchdogs. This is Joan Kraft. And let's kick it off. Yeah, I think I hear she likes people writing about her. Oh, she can't stand people <laughs> writing about her. So we thought we would dedicate a, a, a nice video segment to her specifically because it's pretty amazing when you start looking at the stuff that she's out there saying. The uh, Higher Learning Commission, I think that was, we did an article on that regards to the letter that she sent to the Higher Learning Commission. And it was interesting, some of the uh, points that she made to them, but she didn't include some of them that affect her. Right. That, uh, one of the first ones in here, since your visit in July, Bruder has been fired and has now sued the college and four of the trustees individually, and in their capacity as trustees for various charges. Well, yeah, he did, but she left out, there's other people that have sued the college, and she's actually named in a lawsuit in her individual capacity as well. Yes, she is. So she she failed to mention that to the Higher Learning Commission. Um, so second lawsuit on the controller and the chief financial officer. That'd be Tom Glazer, the treasurer, and Lynn Cepeda. She wants to bring them back. She said that it's expected by the end of this month, the lawsuit. How does she know? She's been talking to them? Got the pointers on what to file suit against? Well, she knew well in advance. There's no question Give that. Give them copies of executive session in, in fact, when you look at the timeline of things she asks for versus what shows up in the Daily Herald, it doesn't take a whole lot to figure out who's given information to <laughs> the Daily That's Herald. Uh, I love this, this one about the, uh, the financials. The college is ineligible to apply for the Government Finance Officers Award. Okay. Well, that's an ICCTA award, isn't it? I'm not sure if it's ICCTA or who is actually issues it, but she's definitely upset that they're not going to be able to apply for that award. You know, they've gotten it for so many years in the past, which leads to the question, how did they get it when they put a proper budget together and find out that they were cooking the books, you know, roughly $35 million extra in the budget that, you know, makes the numbers look good. Uh, now that they're not doing that, you know, maybe they wouldn't qualify for that award. Well, not to mention, I believe that's an ICCTA award, not to mention the Illinois Community College Board ruled against them and forced them to pay some money back. Yep. I just want to throw that out there because they might become uh, pivotal in the appointment of a new trustee and they need to be reminded that they themselves, the Illinois Community College Board, forced the college to pay back money that they were not authorized to receive. And that was that under was, the old board, the old board and Bruder's board. Yeah, the Bruder board, not the reform board. The reform board is the one that exposed all the corruption going on. So then she talks about a clean audit. You mean like the one in Dixon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clean audits for 20 years, yet the lady stole $54 million. Maybe it didn't, she says, maybe it didn't fit the narrative of financial mismanagement and massive corruption. Well, I mean, we, we know government audits generally uh, audit what they're told to audit and, and nothing else. And all they're looking for is what came in and what went out does it balance. They don't look for appropriate spending, better known as a performance audit or a forensic audit. And then, then she complains about being seated in a straight line. Like that's any of the HLC's business. Is, is it? Do, do they have a check mark? A trustee is seated in a <laughs> semicircle. Is that part of a accreditation? Man, I, I love this. Uh, oh, the next one. The next one's classic. The Edgar County Watchdogs have decided to move on to other units of government. However, their spiteful and destructive rhetoric directed at the board minority and previous board members continues on their website. Well, Diane, we look forward to seeing you Thursday night because we're going to expose more stuff. And, and I believe what, several people have asked her to apologize for the Hitler Nazi comments she made when she was part of the majority. She's never apologized for that. What, does HLC know that? Oh, I'm sure they do. But what we say, 
putting facts out on the table with documents, we're being spiteful and destructive, and she calls it destructive rhetoric. Is it not destructive to call us Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the hypocrisy is just unreal. Well, that's just, was. you know, that right there, she, she, she showed everybody she lost. Well, she's not going to tell anybody that. You know, that's like the law firm. She's been fighting to get the get rid of the law firms. Anything that the clean slate has done, she's been against from the get-go. And first it was conflicts. we got to get rid of them because there's conflicts. Well, she's lost every ARDC complaint she's filed. Yeah, and there, and there was no conflicts. And she's never come out and said, well, I lost. But she made sure to tell everybody that, oh, they're under investigation. Yeah, well, she lost them all. Every one of them. Uh, and then she says it's much better not to have our hateful comments in the meeting. Well, our comments are truthful, and we'll be there Thursday night. And we understand the truth does hurt. Um, they've dropped their membership in ICT, ICCTA. No, nope, they didn't drop it. They had a membership and didn't renew it. There you go. That's, That's not dropped. There is a difference. Exactly. They, they voted not to pay the renewal. Um, and again, is, is that against the law not to renew? No. Um, this next one's a good one. The withholding of critical legal information from some of the trustee continues. I finally received the email copies in the morning after leaving a voice message for the attorney. That's what she told the, I, the uh, Higher Learning Commission. So did they withhold the information or did she get it? Well, she said she got it. Well, then after she said they withheld it. Well, then you can't Is have that, She was kind of for it before she was against it? Yeah. But when you look at that statement, and look what we just exposed with Dr. Bruder's private emails from his attorney involving Aaron Burt. Aaron Burt was keeping things from the board regarding his retirement. I don't mind that. Oh, that's the old board. That's that makes her, it okay. That's her friend. That's right. That's yeah. It's perfectly okay. That's right. That, that's okay. So we're, we're back to the good for the goose, but not the gander. Uh, then she talks about uh, micro their concerns on micromanagement, and then she responded with her concerns since they had not been addressed. But you know, we go back to the same thing that, well, it used to apply when the old board was around, that the board spoke as a board and situations like this would certainly, if this happened last year and Hamilton would have written a letter to the HLC, it would surely result in another illegal censure. <laughs> no doubt. Um, then what else are they talking about? Body language and demeanor of board members during meetings. Well, HLC was there. You know, I wish they would have said which board members they were talking about because uh, you can bet body language and demeanor uh, that they didn't approve of probably came from McGuire uh, and maybe somewhat from Hamilton. Uh, I don't know, but I, I was there at a lot of the meetings, and uh, for the most part, that body language came from McGuire. Um, and just out of curiosity, what's the seating arrangement have to do with body language? Uh, nothing, and, and, and it's not, you know, it's the chairman's job to decide the seating arrangement. Um, that's bottom line. You know, that, that claim that we've moved on to other units of government, um, haven't written the article yet, but we'll be sure to get it posted. Um, you may recall that McGuire gave talking points to Joe Wozniak. And, uh, you, know, you know Joe, he can't put three sentences together. So McGuire doesn't show up to the meeting, and she gives him the talking points, and he reads them. Well, I wanted a copy of all those talking points. And she had some attorney put together some unbelievable legal argument for both of them that they don't have to give it up through FOIA. So we filed a complaint with the AG. They confirmed. So she's under invest under investigation. She was until the law firms took one look at it and said, Diane, you got to turn this stuff over. It's not exempt under FOIA. So we'll publish that. And sure enough, there was things that she gave to him that he did not read during the meeting. And that's what I suspected. And uh, so we'll, we'll get those published along in a separate article but we are still looking into COD, Ms. McGuire. We've not gone away like you think. So then she talks about the chair mentioning rules of common courtesy in her guidelines. 
guidelines before public comment. And and you know you can't you can't dictate uh, what people how people use their First Amendment rights. Um, and then she complained because the attorney who was the former client of the watchdogs, which is all been aired out. There's no conflict because we signed waivers for attorney-client privilege. Uh, the attorney or the chair never stopped any of the remarks from the watchdogs or, or others who followed their lead. He has no authority to stop them. Exactly. You can't stop them. But how is it that she thinks that's the attorney's place? As a matter of fact, by oh, not, wait. they're protecting the public by not stopping those comments because people can sue for a violation of their First Amendment rights. And isn't that exactly what you told them when they tried to have the past attorney throw you out of the meeting? That's right, and that didn't work. Yeah, we got that on video too. We'll make sure we add that little clip in. You'll enjoy that. And what else? Uh, the board majority does not feel Feel way like represented by various law. Really? Apparently, the board, oh, the board minority, does not feel as a minority. Doesn't feel. Well, Hamilton didn't feel rep represented, but it didn't matter. Right. Um, yes, we realize that attorneys for public bodies are supposed to represent the the public body. Uh, they're supposed to represent the people too, and somewhat to, to try to guide the public body into whatever they can legally do, and try to make sure that they don't do things that are illegal. Something the former attorneys did never do. Um, so she speaks for other board members in the letter and claims that her own personal response. But that's what she attacked Kathy for with her censure was that she spoke on behalf of the board. Isn't this statement speaking on behalf of the board or behalf of some of the board? Yeah, behalf of some of the board, yeah. The board minority does not feel. Sorry, Diane, we don't really care how you feel. The truth is what it is. Well, hopefully they'll be in a straight line on Thursday while we're up there. And hopefully, um, I don't know, we'll be there. We'll be there nice and early. We encourage everybody to show up for this meeting. You know, for those that haven't been following it, this is the, the com things that need to be understood is the difference between a Bruder board and a reform board. And the Bruder board is Diane McGuire, Wozniak, and Burt, and their push to take control to revert back to the old ways of business. And the reform board are those willing to stand up and do what's right and protect the taxpayers. And the pattern is clear, there's no question. The pattern is clear. These three have no intention of protecting the taxpayer. And they're too deeply involved in everything that caused where we're at today, the College of DuPage. Well, they're just trying to un undo everything that was done since April in an attempt, as my belief is, in an attempt to further provide cover for everything that was done in the last three or four years. You know, something we haven't talked about, I wrote about it briefly, but looking through Diane McGuire's expenses, how is it that the college is paying for her husband's travel? Because the notes on her expense report says she's got to pay money back to the college for her husband. Well, that's that was the previous board. That's fine. So the previous board, it's okay. See what I mean, folks? It's back to they want the old way of things. It's time for the citizens to step up and get involved. Seven o'clock, College of DuPage, come to the meeting. That's it. See you later. All right. Have a good day. Yeah.